Hi, I'm Jim Holmes, and I want to show you some pretty exciting new capabilities for working in code inside of Test Studio. This is new from 2016 R1. And there's a lot of really great stuff here that can help you extend Test Studio, extend your tests in Test Studio to be much more solid, much more accurate, and a lot more maintainable. So this is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. First off, let's have a look at what we're going to be interacting with. You may have seen this demo before. It's just a uh, very simple contact grid. The idea is that via Kendo UI, we can create new users here, uh, new contacts. We can work at editing and updating those. Um, so we can build some very simple CRUD tests or create, retrieve, update, delete. So here's what a standard test might look like. Um, and in this case, we're actually doing an update test. So we need to have a contact in the database we need to retrieve it, then we're going to update it and persist it back. And if we run it, we'll see that this will run in the background and it's going to run just fine. Um, but one of the problems with this is that we're using the UI itself to set up the data for our update test. And this becomes a problem because if we have some issue with how the um, test was uh, how the create part worked, the rest of the test would fail. Moreover, if you're using the UI to set up and configure and create your test data, it's slow and it's brittle. So there's a couple things here. First off, and most important, in good test case design, we want every test to set up its own test data. Secondly, we want to avoid the UI. So this is an okay test, but you know, like I said, we're using the UI to set things up. Notice any other problem? We're verifying at the UI level, but we're not actually checking the database. We're not making sure that things are properly persisted down to the database. So in a way, this is a very shallow test, and it's not a great test, which is why, if you'll notice, it's named not a really good test. We can do better, and this version of Test Studio is going to help us out. So here, we're moving the setup for creating the contact off to a coded step. We're also going to make use of some external libraries. So here is an idea where you can collaborate, work together with your developers to build up really terrific support libraries that you can leverage to do a lot of really neat things. So remember, we want to be able to create a new contact, but we don't want to do it from the UI. We want to do it from code and moreover, we want to actually use the existing APIs of our system to build those things out. Why? Because as a team, we've built those APIs, we've tested them, we know they're solid. So let's go ahead and use them for our own tests for other things. How do we do that? So here is a file that is a, an API that I've built working with the developers. And this is intended for testers. So there are a few specific things that I'm interested in as a tester. I want to be able to easily create new contacts. I want to, um, I've got a couple helper things here for randomizing. Um, but here also is something I wanna get an entire contact by its ID. So I can create contacts to do the setup, and then I can reach out to the database to test things. Now here is one really neat piece here. There's a great open source library called Faker, and it's available in a bunch of different languages. My point being that we're using this 
to randomize the context that we're building. So we're going to get unique data every time. And moreover, the Faker library does kind of realistic stuff. Okay, I'm not going off on a huge tangent. There's a point here. Inside of Test Studio, we can leverage all of these libraries and we can do it really easily. So we've got a number of different things that we're going to have to bring in to Test Studio. Let me show you how we do that. So the first thing I want to call out is I have created this library um, folder here. And inside of that, I have copied the files that I was just walking you through. There's the Faker library. Here's the support library that we're working with. And then this web API is the actual um, project library or DLL that contains some of the data objects. Now, don't worry about that. It's easy to deal with. So we've got these physically located in our project folder. We actually need to add them to Test Studio, and let's see how to do that. Under Test Studio Settings, we're going to go to Script Options, and I can add reference here. So I browse to where those files are located at. I select them and I'd add them in. When they're added in, you can see that they appear here in the um, reference listing here. Now we need to actually start writing some code. So what I do is, from the step builder, I can add a coded step here. And the very first time that I do this, Test Studio is actually going to ask you what language you want to use. You can choose C Sharp or Visual Basic. I'm using C Sharp in this project. Now, you're going to select a new coded function and it'll drop that in there. I've actually already written this, so let's have a look at what the code looks like. Here's the C Sharp file that is behind, if you will, the test studio file. I've added a using directive so that we can make use of the uh, helper API that we had. And then I've got three simple lines of code here that are going to actually make all of this happen for the setup. We are using that helper API to create the new contact. We're assigning the ID value it returns um, to the variable. We'll write it out to the log file. Extracted values are Test Studio's take on a global variable, if you will. It's available not only within code, but we're going to make use of it inside of our test as well here. So here we go. At the very first step, we've got our new contact created. So we're going to go out to the site. We're going to click the Edit button. But notice that we're going to have to look this up based on the ID of the new contact that we just created because we're going to have to click the appropriate row here. I'm going to take you over and show you another awesome feature of Test Studio which is data-driven find logic. So this edit link here, let's have a look at the element repository. We're going to edit the element and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Now you may have seen some other uh, videos of mine where I'm talking about um, flexible find logic. This is kind of a play on that as well. We're starting by finding the table body here. We're finding a row which contains the new ID. That's that extracted value here. This is data bound now. And you can see that we're able to um, pull this down and add a coded variable here. And this was where I added in new ID 
Remember that extracted value? And I'd set that. So we're going to click that. We'll update it. And then we're going to verify again using that same approach. To locate the region cell, this one here, for that newly created contact. So let's see how this runs and see if it all works. I'll let you in on a secret. I did this beforehand, so yes, it should work. Okay, everything's all green. We've used a coded step to create a new contact. We've saved the ID off, and we're using that ID in two different places so that we can dynamically look up the contact We're also using that to dynamically look up the appropriate contact and the appropriate cells to do our verification. Create our data. We're doing that dynamically with a helper function that gives us unique values every time, but we're still not touching the database. All we're doing is verifying at the UI. So let's take this one more step further. Here we are with a much better test. This looks almost exactly like the previous test. However, note that we've got one more coded step here, and we're actually doing verification directly from the database. So remember, I have my helper method, my helper API, and now we can return the actual object that we created. Once I've got that, I can pull the region, that's the piece that we updated, right, out of that. And then we've got a simple assert to make sure that what we saved on the UI also updated in the database. Let me show you a couple other great features that have been added to enhance the coding experience inside of Test Studio. First off, notice that we can uh, compile all of the code files right here. If we need to update any project files from disk, we can also do that. But we can compile things straight away. That'll pull in references to those, uh, for example, the external libraries that we bought in. Syntax errors are immediately called out here. So that if I add in something bad, and we get immediate feedback here, letting us know that we have problems in our code. Moreover, if I double click on that, it'll take me back to the area where problems were. Now this was actually on the line before, so I can clean that up. Uh, we get compiler output here so that every time when you're making changes, um, it's constantly compiling in the background to let you know about issues that are coming up, such as syntax errors or other problems. There you have it. Some simple changes in Test Studio that let you much more easily bring code, the right amount of code, into your projects to make your tests much more powerful, more flexible, more accurate, and much more maintainable. I hope you find great use out of these. Happy testing. Bye-bye. This is Jim Holmes signing off.